uh, come up here and you have this ability to uh, have this chance to uh, bring this message up to you. Okay, and uh, if you turn in, if you go turn in your Bibles to uh, Psalm 107, let me find that too. Psalm 107 and beginning in verse number six. Um, what do you got there? Here, let me set myself. And we'll begin reading verse number six. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death, being, found, being bound in their affliction and I am. Because they rebelled against the word of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to preach, Lord, and I thank you for your word that you gave unto us, and I pray that we have a passion for it, and that we will follow, Lord, and I pray that you give me the words to say, Lord, and it will be what you want me to say and not my own words, Lord, and I thank you for this church and for blessing us with all your blessings that you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I know I, a couple years ago I played on a uh, golf team, and uh, it was... It was fun. It was, you know, I wasn't very good at that, but you know, that led to this opportunity where I was teeing off, and this kid, he decided that he was going to walk down the fairway while the rest of us were still teeing off. I don't know why he did that, but that wasn't a good time for him to do, to do that. Anyways, I go to tee off, and I have a nice long ball with a good slice to the right, and it was, you know, and I start yelling four. I start yelling four repeatedly. I keep yelling it. I'm like four, and you. It didn't work. He didn't, he didn't heed me. Ball hits the ground, bounces, hits him in the foot, and it was okay. It could have hit him in a worse spot. But I, you know, my repetition of me, you know, yelling for as a warning, I was trying to get a message across there. In this psalm here, David is trying to get, um, the, is stressing the importance of being thankful for our deliverance. We have been delivered from the chains of sin. And and then specifically, let's go to verse 6 and verse 7. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. You know, you think Israel was held by the Persians and the Babylonians and the Egyptians. And you, specifically here, you have Israel being held by the Persians. And, they, and Ezra, Nehemiah, and Zerubbabel, they led them to a city of habitation. And... That city of habitation is the place where we want to be. You know, we want to be in the city of habitation that the Lord gives us. And I find myself sometimes in a place where I have a mundane attitude, a mundane disposition towards uh, my deliverance that God gives me. And you look in verse th um, 36, uh, and he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And you think of who's more thankful for their deliverance? The uh, thankful, you know, the, the hungry or the satisfied person. We don't want to be the satisfied. We want to be hungry for God's word and for his will and for walking with him. And, you know, we want to be hungry with that. You know, and do you ever find yourself satisfied? You know, we need to allow God to do his wonderful works. And, and when we allow him to do his wonderful works, it creates a, we create a passion. You know, the hungry has that passion. You know, they have a passion. Food. They want food. And we need to have that passion for God's word. Now, I'm going to go down to uh, verse number uh, 11 and 12. And this is Israel's distraction. And they were distracted from, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. We see in this verse, God had Israel in a place of bondage because they had turned their backs on him. They had rebelled against God's commandments and had contemned his calling. 
you know, they were distracted. They had placed another king in their life. They had placed an idols in their life. You know, they're worshiping the idols of Egypt, as you know, and uh, they had become content in Egypt. And we can't find ourselves content in that place. Have we ever let distractions get in our lives where we um, turn our eyes from God? Maybe we were walking in the light. We we're walking. We're, we've been praying. We've been reading our devotions like we're supposed to. Football season comes, and our team's playing on Sunday night, and maybe we have that as an idol, and we don't go to church that night. Uh, and maybe God is calling us to a ministry, and we're contemning his call. You know, a specific ministry. His calling. We don't think it sounds as good as our plans, maybe. You know, we, we, we want to do our own way. We want to walk our own way. How about God's revealed calling? His revealed calling is, you know, the, the great commission. We are to go into the world and preach um, the gospel. I'm going to turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 11. You can as well. <laughs> I need to find it here. Second Corinthians 5, and beginning in verse 17 and going down to 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Become, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us to the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, the God was in Christ reconciling the word unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now we then are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, for you recon reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made in the righteousness of God in him. As new creatures, we have the task of the ministry of reconciliation. We, we shouldn't be, you know, we should go into the gospel. We should be door knocking. We should be, you know, giving every opportunity we have to share the gospel, we should be doing that. Um, and uh, in verse 19, we see the deliverance of God. He has not imputed us our trespasses. We should be thankful for that. We've been delivered from that. And then we, in verse 20... We are now ambassadors. Now you think of the definition of the ambassador. It's someone going from one sovereign state to another so state. It doesn't have to be sovereign. If they're going to another state. As Christians, we are going, as Christians, we are going from a state of salvation and sanctification to the, the ambassadors to the state of separation and sin. We need to bring the gospel to those and and just minister to show them that there is a way to, how to get to heaven, how to be sanctified. And, you know, you see young Christians demonstrating this so much better because they are excited because they realize what they have been delivered from. They right. realize that they have been delivered from death and are going now to eternal life with Christ. And, you know, they get more excited for us, and that's why they're so able to share the gospel so much more effectively. Now, I'm going to go down to verse number 12 and 13, and we'll see in Israel's distress. Verse 12, it's back to uh, Psalms 107. I'm like, Where, what? Okay, Psalm 107, back to, and beginning in verse 12 and 13. Um, Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. God got Israel's attention with labor under the hands of the Egyptians. You know, they, they were at the place where they were doing their own thing, but then God brought this distress into their lives. He got their, into their lives and got their attention. He brought them down to a humble state. And you think of Joshua 3, 3 through 5, and I'm just going to turn that in. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites bearing it, ye shall remove yourselves from their place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, and about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And once he gets our attention, he speaks, like Moses in the burning bush. But once we get that, we still, we may have, God may have our attention, but we have to remove ourselves from that place. We can't stay in that place. We have to go towards what his calling is. And we have to remove our sights and fall. And uh, he's going to lead us to places where we've never been before. God leads us, and he will lead us to a place 
when he does that, though, he will bring us to a place where he's going to confront us, and we're going to have to sanctify ourselves, sanctify, sanctify ourselves for our sins so we can walk in his light, because we cannot walk in the darkness, because in God there is no darkness at all. So we have to make sure we are fully in that. And then, so they had humbled themselves. They had, God forgets not the cry of the humble. And you see David with that, um, that attitude and that disposition as he brings that attitude before God. And maybe we have troubles and trials in our lives. God is waiting for our humble cry to him for, his, our, de, for our deliverance. God just wants us to become to that humble place where we can't do it on our own. But we have to totally rely on him. And that's what God's waiting for, and he will deliver us. And we, in verse 14 and 15 of Psalm 107, And he brought, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands of sin and sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. When, we, when he heard that humble cry, he broke their chains of sin and slavery and sunder. God has a victory over that sin, and we, we just have to bring that to him. He will deliver us. That's his promise. David, and so we see in Colossians 1, 12, and 13, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen. It hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. We have been brought from that place, he hath delivered us from the power of darkness. We do not have to walk in darkness if we are Christians. We just have to walk in the light of the Father. And we have to confess our sins. We have to sanctify ourselves and make sure that we don't have that darkness in us. And so we see David again stressing in this, in the end of this chapter. And he's stressed this repeatedly over in verse 1, 8, 21, 31. He keeps repeating it. And you can see that stress on that um, sanctification and that thankfulness for deliverance. It's a dangerous place to become th th unthankful for the deliverance God has given us. Right. You know, you, you think it's... It, how many times do I find myself singing the hymns and just singing the words? You know, you know nothing but the blood of Jesus. That, that's something to be thankful for. We shouldn't just be... Th you know, we have to just, you know, have that thankful attitude towards Him. You know, it may, and this brings us to some conclusion, maybe we have never humbled our hearts and cried to God for his deliverance, for his free gift of salvation which he has given to us. We, it's, we have to come to a place where we realize that we can't be saved through our own works, you know, we, through our own good deeds. We have to realize that God is our only source of deliverance, that through Christ, whose blood we have on, who died on the cross for our, my sin, that we can now have that gift of salvation and deliverance from an eternity in hell. Or maybe we're believers, but we find ourselves bound by the burden of sin and we are not walking in his light. You know, we, we just let that darkness come into us and we, we think we're good, but we, we really are not in line with what God wants us to be. Or maybe we simply have an unthankful attitude and we're just not passionate. We don't have that hunger for God's word. We don't have it for his walk, his will. Um, and possibly we are condemning his call. We aren't giving him all the areas of our life. We, God, maybe, we, God has specifically called us to ministry, but we are rejecting it. We want, we, we want to do our own thing, but God has better plans for us. The rich man he sent away, but he has better plans for us. You know, in verse 9, you think you know, Christ has come, and he, is, he has filled the hungry soul with goodness, with good things. And the rich he has sent empty away. We just have to allow ourselves to be that hungry soul. And um, I, let me just let us pray. Lord, I thank you for your deliverance that you have given us, Lord. I thankful, I'm thankful for your gift of salvation, Lord, that you've given us. I pray, Lord, that you give us that thankful attitude for the wonderful works which you have given us, Lord. And I thank you for this church, Lord. I just thank you for the wonderful works that you've given us in this church, Lord. And I pray that... We see that we cannot be walking on our own accord, Lord, but that we need you and that we humble ourselves before you, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.